Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to cover how to use the Edit Mesh tool in Character Creator 2.0 to, uh, to modify mesh in various ways that you couldn't do before in more detailed and smoother fashions. And I'm also going to be showing you how to create your own prop, uh, your own accessories and props in Icon and import those into Character Creator and then save those out as uh, props later on. You can modify the mesh of your props in a detailed uh, manner using the Edit Mesh tool in Character Creator 2.0. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of, uh, you know, how we would normally import in accessories into Character Creator. So on the screen right now, I have this uh, female character with a, you know, a short tomboyish type haircut. And what I'm going to do is just import in a couple of things onto this character like you would normally do from iClone. Uh, just import a couple of accessories. So I have iClone open here. I have a character on the screen, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But I'm just going to go down to Accessories uh, under Avatar Accessories. And I'm going to go to uh, add a couple of things to this character. Under G5 Accessories, we have these sunglasses that are way from way back in the day with iClone 5. I'm going to click and drag these sunglasses onto the character. So generally what we would do is, uh, you know, if you come across a situation like this where the accessory is not, uh, I'm going to just take off this morph gizmo right now. Uh, the accessory is not, uh, you know, in the proper position, in the proper scale. What you can do is use the W hotkey to move it. And you can move along these uh, different axes. You can move it forward as well, just like this. Okay, so now we have it in the proper position uh, on the nose there. But you can notice that the, uh, the handles of the sunglasses are going into the head there, which we don't want. So, you know, generally what we would do is also uh, press the R hotkey to bring the scale gizmo up and just, you know, stretch it out like this until it's no longer poking through the, uh, the head of our character there. Something like this. And you can also, you know, combine that with uh, stretching it out on the, on the Y axis there, uh, the green axis and... Uh, you know, just going as far as you want and you know, getting a proper proportions and everything like that. So this is generally the way that we would, uh, you know, uh, modify accessories and everything before. And that's all fine and good for simple uh, props like the glasses here. Let's take a look at a different uh, accessory. I'm going to go back to iClone here and I'm going to go into G6 accessories. And we have this braid I'm going to bring into our character. So with, uh, with characters with hair, you'll often experience this kind of issue. When you add hats onto them, you'll experience some hair breakage. Uh, various other, you know, props and stuff and accessories will, you know, will come across this situation as well. So notice the shape of this braid. It looks fairly suitable for the character's head. However, obviously we want to get rid of that uh, mesh breakage on the top there. And also there's a little bit on the back right there. So before Character Creator 2.0, what we'd have to do is we'd have to press the R hotkey to scale it up. Um, you know, scale it up just like this on the uh, x-axis. Uh, just to get rid of all that, uh, you know, hair breakage on the top there, we can also reposition it using the W hotkey again and, you know, just do something like this. You can see that even now there's still a little bit of uh, hair breakage through. So we, again, go back to the R hotkey and scale it up uh, just like this. And uh, the back has, to, has been fixed now, but we can still kind of reposition it a little bit further up here just by uh, doing something like this. There we go. Make sure there's no breakage in the back. Okay, so that looks fine, but notice the shape of the braid now is like a lot different from what it originally was. It's kind of stretched out. It's a little bit too oversized for the head and everything like that. Uh, it just looks kind of goofy in a way. So what I'm going to show you is how to use this edit mesh mode here uh, to actually avoid making things look disproportionate like this. I'm going to delete the uh, current braid we have on the screen right now and re-import it in. And what I'm going to do now is use that same edit mesh mode tool. So this is a simple example. I'm just going to load up the edit mesh mode right now. And you can see now we're able to select different parts, different uh, faces uh, of the uh, mesh on this uh, bray and move them around. We can you know, press the W hotkey or the E hotkey to rotate and the R hotkey to scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make sure I have soft selection on because when you have soft selection on, it'll create a much smoother modification. I'm just going to select these four little spots right here. And with soft selection on, when I move this, it's also going to uh, affect the areas, the polygons around, or the faces around this selection area as well. So if I press the W hotkey for uh, for movement, I'm just going to move the mesh up slightly like this. And notice that it creates a nice smooth uh, surface. It smooths things out. If we go to the side, notice there's no jagged edges. It's very smooth still, and the original shape of the beret remains intact. So we're only really just modifying this one section right here. And we can take it a little bit further up just like that. And now we've gotten rid of all that uh, hair. If I click over here, you can see there's no longer any hair breakage. And the shape of the beret looks fine. And we can do the same thing on the back here with just the one section here. Just select a couple of uh, 
uh, faces there and bring those out slightly just like that and that should do the trick. And that's a really quick fix for, uh, you know, a very common problem when you add hats to your uh, characters uh, with uh, any kind of hair. This is a very simple and easy example, but, the, you know, the technique is fairly, fairly similar. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how to create your own accessories and bring it into uh, Character Creator then. So to create my accessory, I'm going to go to iClone. I have a, lo a character loaded up here, this uh, CC character. If you go to, under Avatar, you can find CC character Natalie right here. And I'm going to give her a uh, hat. We're going to create a hat from scratch using props. So under props, I'm going to go to 3D blocks. And in 3D blocks, I'm just going to double click the ball and add the ball in. And then we're going to go down in here and add a torus in as well. So there's our ball and our torus. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale down this ball because this is going to be the uh, top part of our hat there. Use the R hot key to scale that down. There we go, something like that. And press the W key to bring it further down. Now don't worry if the uh, bottom part is breaking through there, we're going to hide that mesh a little bit later and I'll show you how to do that using the uh, Edit Mesh tool in Character Creator. So let's select our torus here again and just R scale it down so it's pretty flat and then we can stretch it out just like that. So we're going to kind of create like a very simple like bowler hat. You know, I'm not going to get too complicated here. Uh, I just want to quickly show you how you can do it. There's probably people out there that are a lot more skilled at me than this. So uh, okay, there's this, there's a simple shape of our bowler hat. So what I need to do now is I, I can select my uh, torus here, right click it and select attach and attach that to my uh, sphere there. So now they're attached together. And what I can do then is also go down here to uh, merge subprop. If I don't want to have a subprop, I can just go to merge subprop and bring that up onto my character's head. All right, so there we go. Covering your head right now. So, uh, let's press the R hotkey and scale it down something a bit more manageable. There we go. And then W to bring it back up to here. Okay, there we go. Well, looks like it could be some kind of cool uh, sci-fi helmet or something like that. I should have done that instead of a bowler hat. Anyways, let's go and just bring it down a little bit more here as well. And I can also just stretch it out slightly to the back just because nobody's head is perfectly round, I don't believe. Maybe there's someone out there, but uh, okay. And then maybe thin it out a little bit on the sides there as well. Again, don't worry about this part that's covering the eyes right now. We're going to hide that a little bit later. All we want to do is get a good position uh, for our hat on the character's head. Cool, I think we're good to go. Uh, and once we're done that, what I'm going to do is uh, right-click on the sphere and attach it to my character's head. All right, and then if we go to the scene manager, you can see it's an accessory now, the ball 001. We can rename it if we want just by double-clicking here and call it a cool hat. All right, and then go to the content manager here, and under props, we're going to go to, uh, rather under uh, characters, rather, we're going to go to custom, and then accessory, and let's go ahead and press the plus key down here, and that'll allow us to add it as an accessory, and we'll just call it, uh, you know, cool hat or something, because I'm totally unoriginal. All right, so we have this cool hat, let's bring it into our character and character creator, let's replace the beret with an even cooler piece of headgear. All right, there we go. There's our cool hat. So we can right click, oops, over here, select the beret, and we'll just delete that. All right. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of the mesh on the bottom part of the sphere. So let's go ahead and take that uh, right click cool hat and press W. And we'll bring it up here a little bit. And I'm going to go into edit mesh move. Now it looks like a planet, but we're going to make it look like a bowler hat pretty soon. So all I need to do is I'm going to select, make sure back face selection is selected because if I go halfway and I select like this, let's try it one more time here. Let's try and get as much as we can. Okay, maybe these sections aren't showing up. But I can just hold control and select these ones just like this. There you go. But you'll notice that the back face, the entire uh, back face of the hat was selected as well. So that's the advantage of using back face selection if you're doing like symmetrical kind of modifications. Uh, so all we want to do here is we just want to go ahead and hide this. And it's going to hide that mesh. And then if we go out of edit mesh mode, you can see that uh, we no longer have a lower mesh and we have an empty spot. You know, you, you can see through it in this case, but you can, you can also change that if you want. Uh, you have two-sided materials, so you can't see through the inside, but... We don't really care because we're placing it on her head. All right, so let's go ahead and press the W hotkey. Bring that hat down. 
looking pretty stylish. All right, and maybe we can scale it down a little bit as well. Use the R hotkey, scale it down. Because this character's hair is a bit, uh, a bit easier to place hats on anyways. Okay, you can see there's a little bit of breakage, but uh, nothing too much to worry about. Okay, so we can just go ahead into edit mesh mode here. And I'm going to bring out the uh, front side here. So let's just select this entire, let's deselect back face selection in this case. We're only going to be using the front here. This selection right here. And let's just go ahead and press the W hotkey. And we will bring that out to cover that part of the hair. Okay. We go to the side. Let's see. Yeah, it looks okay. You can select smooth. When you select smooth, you, you know, it'll kind of retract a lot of the times. So I'm going to press Control Z and undo that. And we're going to just add another section down here, holding control again to do that. And then I'm going to press smooth. Okay. And also relax. It's a very similar thing, but I'm just going to go ahead and control do that. I think that is looking a okay. We can take the, the top part of the hat down here as well, since it may be a little bit too rounded for a bowler hat. I'll just go ahead and smooth this out as well. Whoops, we need to make sure we have back face selection on there. Control Z three times. Let's select back face selection and select that top part here. There we go. Just kind of bringing that top down slightly. Good. Okay. And, you know, little areas like this you can pop out as well. Control click and select different uh, faces on the mesh. Just bring them out slightly. Just like that. Okay, and something like this, you know, bring it out slightly like that. And, you know, you're pretty pretty good to go. Um, again, some haircuts will be pickier than others. I chose a fairly short haircut, just kind of keep this example uh, simplified here. Again, I'm just holding control and selecting the different faces and doing some last minute uh, mesh modification there. And then we can do something like... Uh, I think it's looking okay. Uh, this part here is popping a little too much for my comfort. Let's smooth that out there. There we go. Maybe this section here as well. I can smooth that out slightly. There you go. Okay. So I think we're okay on this, on this hat here. Let's uh, bring this section out here a little bit. I'm going to bring it out along with the front of the, uh, oh, that won't work. There we go. Okay, that's that's looking okay. All right, we're not going to be too picky here. So let's go ahead and just, uh, you know, maybe it looks more like a safari hat at this point. But, uh, you know, you can go ahead and spend all the time in the world modifying the mesh on this on this hat here. If I wanted to, uh, you know, select a torus, I can uh, make sure we have everything selected around there. Go ahead and just, you know, press R and flatten down the brim even further. Just like that. Okay. The brim was looking a little bit too thick there. Cool. Okay. I think we're good to go. So what we need to do now is go into the appearance editor and you'll notice that we don't have any materials assigned to this uh, hat. So what I'm going to do is we need to select a PBR material for each section of the hat, the torus and the ball. So I'm going to go over here to select this PBR3 material and do the same thing for the torus. Okay. Um, if you have more material sections on your hat, you may need to select higher materials like such as five this is a very simple example I'm giving you. So we're just selecting our embedded PBR cloth 3 material. And then I'm going to activate the appearance editor. Uh, it'll say we're going to flatten the images on the object. No worries, we don't have any textures on it as, as of yet. Uh, so once this loads up, it'll load up with a default uh, fabric uh, texture you can see here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go into the ball and under mesh data right here, or rather materials, not mesh data, under materials, the base is the only one we need to deal with in this case because the base is just a single color. If I select the ball and I go to, uh, or select the hat rather, and I go to diagnostic mode here, under diagnostic mode if I enable it, you can see mesh data, we go to color ID, everything will be black, okay? So that's just to let you know that it's the base. So if we go to materials and base here, uh, what I can do is I can create a leather surface on this hat by using one of our materials base and one of our embedded materials. So we have embedded fabric, we have embedded leather, we have embedded uh, metallic, and all sorts of, uh, you know, kind of uh, options. There's also the leather generator and wood. You can also import in your own texture maps as well. But for this case, I'm just going to use embedded leather. 
we're going to go ahead and use the crocodile. You can also use stuff like, uh, you know, full green and, uh, and plush types of leather as well. That one looks kind of cool, actually, but I'm going to use crocodile in this case. And you can see, if we zoom in really quickly there, notice the texture is not really that detailed, and that's because our material uh, uh, resolution is really low. So we need to select the uh, hat right here, or the ball rather, and change the output size to like 1024 by 1024. At the very minimum, you should have 1024. And you'll notice that the resolution gets a lot higher for that. And then we can go back to the uh, base material right here, and under base, I'm going to go to transform. And here we can kind of change the amount if we just select enable. We can change the uh, the amount of uh, crocodile scales, I guess you can call them, on this uh, hat here. Let's change that to like uh, 1.5, the scale to 1.5. And you can see those scales will get a little bit larger, which looks, which looks a little bit better, uh, I think. And then we'll do the same thing for the torus. So with the torus, we're going to twirl down everything for the ball. And go to the torus, materials, and uh, base. And open that up. Change from embed fabric. You can see we can change to like, you know, different types of fabric as well. If we wanted to have the rim of this hat look a little bit different, we can change it to a, uh, uh, whoops, we'll embed fabric here. Let's just change it back to uh, leather here, embed leather and uh, crocodile. And here we can see the, uh, along the brim of the hat, again, the resolution is not very high. So what we can do is select the torus and change that output size to 1024. We're going to get a bit more detail there. And then we're going to just go to the back to transform again under the base, enable that. And we can scale this one to 1.5 as well if we want to get more uh, larger scales, just something like that. All right, so what we created is a cool looking, you know, nice leather hat here, uh, leather bowler hat. I can go ahead and, uh, you know, bring it up on our character's head, maybe rotate it slightly to the, to the right, just to give it a more uh, hip look, something like this, more fashionable uh, hip style uh, bowler hat like that. All right, uh, looking pretty good. Uh, you know, for, for my effort, I'm nowhere near uh, close to a modeler or anything like that, so uh, don't laugh at my efforts, please. Uh, so what I'm going to show you now is how to import this back into iClone. And you can save it as a prop or an accessory. So I'm going to just export my character right now. We're going to go to Character and Export iAvatar. I'll just keep all the resolutions there. Uh, you can choose iClone 6.5 or iClone 7. In this case, I'm going to choose iClone 7 because we used a PBR material on our hat there. And just go ahead and export that. We'll call it, uh, you know, Test Girl. Okay, just save it to our desktop. And once that's finished exporting, I'm going to go to my desktop here and let's find our Test Girl right there. All right, we'll click and drag her into uh, iClone 7 right here. And when she's here in iClone 7, we can uh, save that hat separately as a prop or an accessory. Again, I'm using the same process I showed you before. Uh, let's go to the scene manager here and uh, open up our character, Test Girl. So there's our hat right there. We can save it as an accessory. Again, like, like I showed you before, we're going to uh, Avatar, Custom, Accessories, and we can save this. Uh, I'm in iClone 7 now. Uh, I exported out of iClone 6. We can save this as a hat, as an accessory, so now you can apply it to any other character you want. Or if you want to save it as a prop, just right-click it again, Attach and Detach. Boom, it'll become a prop. And you go over here to Props, to Custom, and Props, and save it as a prop. So, Hat. Prop, and then you can apply it to really anything. You can use it in a lot, a variety of ways, uh, and have a lot of fun with that. So now we have our completed hipster girl with her crocodile leather skin hat. Uh, everything's looking fine and dandy. So that's really all there is to it. Just kind of wanted to show you how you can use the Edit Mesh tool in Character Creator. It's a very powerful tool to uh, you know customize your own props. You can bring in simple primitive shapes like I did, just the sphere and the and the torus, and create a hat within a couple of minutes. Uh, if you spend a lot more time on it, you can, uh, you know, create much more interesting and exciting things. But I just wanted to show you a quick example of, uh, you know, how you can use that powerful tool in Character Creator for both uh, accessories and for props. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot. And make sure you check out our YouTube channels and our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.